This is part 109 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing a stored procedure that can perform paging, sorting and searching. And this is how we are going to use that stored procedure. We'll be using that with jQuery data tables plugin. There are several ways to load database data into a jQuery data table. If your data set is small, then we can load all data at once and the jQuery data table plugin is going to perform all the processing on the client side. By processing, I mean paging, sorting, filtering, etc. On the other hand, if your data set is huge, that is if you have millions of rows in your table, then it does not make any sense from a performance standpoint to load all the data at once. Instead, we want to be loading only the correct subset of data. For example, if your page size is 10, then we want to load only those 10 rows from those millions of rows that we have in the table. So all the heavy lifting should be done by the stored procedure on the server. And once we retrieve that correct subset, the jQuery data table plugin is simply going to display that on the page. So in this video, let's discuss how to create that stored procedure which can do all that heavy lifting. And in our subsequent video, we'll discuss creating a generic ASP.NET handler that's going to call that stored procedure and retrieve data. And this generic handler is going to convert that data to a JSON format. And in the video after that, we'll discuss how to consume that data using jQuery data tables plugin and display it on the page. So let's go ahead and create that procedure. We'll be using this table TBL employees to do that. And if you notice, this table has got five columns. I've already created this table and here's the create table script and this script is going to insert some test data. Now let's go ahead and create that procedure. So create procedure, let's call this spget employees and this stood procedure is going to have a few input parameters. At display length. So basically this is going to specify what is your page size. Do you want 10 rows, 15 rows, 20 rows and this is going to be of type integer at display start. So this is going to tell us at which record do we want to start fetching rows and at sort column. So this parameter will tell what is the column by which you want to sort data and this is going to be of type integer because we are not going to pass the column name. Instead, we will be passing the column index number. So for ID, it is 0, first name 1, last name 2, so on and so forth. So we will be passing the column number. And sort direction. So we need to know whether we want to sort data in ascending or descending order. So this is going to be of type nvar care length 10 characters. And finally, we are going to include another parameter search and again this is going to be of type nvar care but let's set the size to 255 and I'm going to default that to a null value in case if we don't specify a value for that parameter. Now if you look at the jQuery data table plugin here notice that we have the search text box. Now you know it's possible that the end user may not type anything into the search text box. In that case, you know, search parameter will be null. So that's the reason we are setting that to null. On the other hand, if they have typed something into the search text box, then we will be passing that to the stored procedure. Okay? As begin end. I'm going to declare two more variables within the stored procedure. Uh, the first one I'm going to call that first record and this is going to be of type integer and another variable is going to be last record. The type is going to be integer. Now let's initialize those variables. Set at first record equals at display start. So for example if we pass um, 0 as the value for display start. That means we want to start at row 1. So we will pass 0. So we are initializing at first record to display start. And in our condition we'll say where for example row number greater than at first record. So it's going to start at row 1. Okay. And let's initialize last record at last record equals at display start plus at display length. So if display start is 0 and if the page size, that is if display length is 10, 0 plus 10, 10 is 10. So first record will be, you know, 0, but in our where clause we will say where, uh, you know, 
row number is greater than first record so it's going to start from one and where row number is less than or equal to last record so greater than zero and less than or equal to ten so it's going to give us the first set of ten records all right so now we are going to make use of CT common table expression we discussed common table expressions in detail in SQL Server video tutorial so if you're new to common table expressions please watch that video from SQL Server tutorial so let's create a CTE. So I'm going to call the CTE underscore employees as, so our CTE begins there and ends there. So what do we want to do? We want to select, so I'm going to use row number function to produce row numbers for each of the rows that we are going to retrieve. And I'm going to use over, so that's the syntax for row number over and we want to order the data by the sort column that the user has specified okay so order by and to specify the order by I'm going to use case statement because depending on the sort column that we get we want to order by that column so case when at sort column if that is equal to zero and at sort direction if that is equal to ascending then what do we want to do if sort column is zero then that means we want to sort by the first column ID so we want to sort by ID and I'm going to end the case statement and specify we want to sort in ascending order because sort direction is ascending order so I'm going to make a copy of this, put a comma, and again, when sort column is zero, and if the sort direction is descending, then we still want to sort by ID column, and we want to sort it in descending order. So we have done that just for ID column. We need to do it for the rest of columns, first name, last name, gender, and job title. In the interest of time, I have already typed these case statements. So let's copy them from the notepad I have here. Look at this. They're pretty straightforward. So this set of case statements here are for column one. So column one is first name. And these two are for column two, that is last name, for gender, and for job title. Okay, so instead of you watching me typing, I'm going to copy and paste them, those case statements here. So we have all those case statements. So our case statement ends there. And if you look at this closing brace, you know, that's the matching one for this opening brace right here. So we want to order by depending on the column that the user has specified. And what are we retrieving here? We're actually selecting, we are sorting by the you know column we the user has specified, and we are actually producing a row number. So we want to give an alias, a column name for that row number. So I'm going to say as row number. So let's call that row number. And we also want the total number of rows. So I'm going to use count of star as over as, let's call this total count. Okay, so we're retrieving the total number of rows as well. And then what else we want? We want all the other columns, that is ID, first name, last name, gender, and job title columns. So let's specify them. Let's include actually from clause first, so we get some IntelliSense. So from TBL employees, so what do we want? We want ID, we want first name, we want last name, we want gender, and we want job title from TBL employees, okay? Now, at the moment, we have only specified sorting. We also need to specify filtering, right? So, we specify that in the where clause. Where, remember, this search parameter can be null, right? If the user does not enter anything in the search text box, then that parameter will be null. So in the where clause here, we're going to say at search is null or ID 
so id column is again in our tbl employee table so id like percentage to that let's append whatever the user has passed us and let's close the wildcard the percentage we have to do that for all the columns basically because you know whatever you search here we have to check if that word is present in any of the rows id first name last name gender job title so we have to do the same thing for all the columns in the table so let's make a few copies of this so or first name similarly or last name gender and finally job title and the where clause is going to end there and our CTE is ending here and what do we want to do now our CTE contains you know these original columns from the underlying table TBL employees plus the row number and the total count of rows in that result set so what do we want to do we want to select all those rows from CTE underscore employees so at the moment what have we done we have done sorting we have done filtering now all that is left is paging and we are going to do paging with these two variables at first record and at last record and if you look at the CT it has got row number as well so I'm going to specify where class here where row number greater than at first record and row number less than or equal to at last record all right so that's all let's go ahead and create this procedure so the procedure is created successfully let's go ahead and test our procedure so if display length is zero let's say I want rows from you know first row so uh, basically display length is going to be 10 let's say we want to display 10 rows and display start I want from the first row so display start is going to be 0 and we want to sort by first column that is ID column so I'm going to specify sort column as 0 because that's an integer and sort direction let's say we want to sort data in ascending order and search I'm not going to specify any value for that parameter and that's fine because we have defaulted it to null so if you don't pass a value it's going to default to null and look at this look at the ID column now you know we get rows from 1 to 10 and how many total rows we have we have in the table 14 rows out of 14 rows we are retrieving 10 rows 1 to 10 because the display length is 10 the page size is 10 and look at that the data is sorted by ID in ascending order on the other hand if I specify the sort direction as descending and when we execute this look at that I get from 14 to 5 now the data is sorted in descending order of ID column right let's say we want to sort data in ascending order of first name column first name column is an index position so if you look at the table here first name is an index position 1 so when I specify you know sort column as 1 then now the data should be sorted by first name look at that it's sorted by first name now we haven't specified any search criteria let's go ahead and specify search criteria let's say I want all female employees so that's our search string that the user has typed in the search text box now let's go ahead and execute that look at that we get all the four you know female employees from our table look at the total count is four and the data is sorted by you know column one column one is first name look at that the data is sorted we get only the female employees and there are four rows okay and look at the row number it's from one to four so this is our stored procedure in our next video we'll discuss how to consume this stored procedure using a generic ASP.NET handler Thank you for listening and have a great day.